In this video, we're going to try to figure out a good way to rig the head and the neck. And let me start off by saying that I'm actually not 100% satisfied with any of the solutions that I've come up with for this yet. But I'm going to show you the one that is kind of least bad so far. So obviously, the simplest rig from our perspective as riggers would be a simple FK bone chain. But for animators, this isn't really nice to work with, for a couple of reasons. The first is that, just like with arms, it's often a lot nicer to animate the head's rotation independently of the body's rotation. Having the head follow the body's rotation forces the animator to do a lot of counter animation. So right away, that suggests that we'll want the head to have a socket switch rig. But even with the head using a socket rig, the animator will still have to do a fair bit of counter animation on the neck. If the body rotates backwards, but the head stays stationary, the neck still needs to be rotated up to create a sensible neck transition between them. So that suggests that we'll want to do something like on Mr. Hot Dog's body, where the neck automatically blends between the head and the body. But that's still not enough, because the animator needs to have separate control over the neck as well, for things like pushing the head forward. So that suggests that we'll want to use the parent trick on the neck to allow it to be animatable on top of that automation. This may seem like a lot, but it's actually not that hard to rig. Let's break this down and solve one problem at a time. First, let's tackle the automatic neck bending. What we want to do is make it so that whenever the animator rotates the head bone, or the body bone, the neck bone blends smoothly between both of the rotations. We already established the basic mechanisms for this in Mr. Hot Dog's body rig, but we're going to have to modify it a bit here because with Mr. Hot Dog, we kind of exploited the fact that all of the body bones had the same default rotation. If we were to construct the same rig with these bones, the neck would move out of its default pose. Allow me to demonstrate. You see, it does create a smooth blend, but the default pose is ruined. That's because the neck is copying the world space rotations of the bones. However, even if we switch the constraint to local space, we run into different problems. The rest pose is now preserved, and rotating the head control seems to work, but rotating the body control now makes the neck rotate even further out of place. We could just remove the constraint to the body control, and the behavior of the head control would still be fine. However, the neck doesn't adjust at all when rotating the body control now. So this is clearly not a workable solution. However, this is another one of those cases where we can use parents to help us out with the automation. The big problem here is that none of these bones have the same default rotation. But if we give them all parents, and do the automation on the parents, then we can easily make those parent bones have the same default rotation as each other. So what we're going to do is insert additional bones into this parent-child hierarchy, like so, and then put the constraints on those bones. This bone will affect the body, this one will affect the neck, and this one will affect the head. It's going to look a little confusing though, because their positions are actually going to be collapsed like this. But just remember that their hierarchy looks like this. Also. Notice that this is going to have a side benefit. The animator will be able to animate the neck bone on top of this automation, because all of the automation is on its parent. So we're actually killing two birds with one stone, since that's another one of the things we wanted to be able to do. Not, not that I approve of killing birds with stones. <clears throat> anyway, so let's try this out. To create these intermediate parent bones, we're simply going to extrude up on a single axis. As long as we're doing it on the same axis, all of these bones will be aligned the same. But it does look like we'll want to flip their roll 180 degrees. Much better. Now we need to change the parent-child relationships. Because of the positions of the bones, this can get a little bit confusing, but just try to keep in mind the hierarchy of the order that you want. This bone is the first in the hierarchy, and this one is second, 
and this one is third, and the fourth, and fifth, and sixth. So this should be the child of that, and this should be the child of that, and actually it already is, since it was extruded from it, hence why it's only giving us the option to make it connected, and this should be the child of that, and so on. Now if we play with the bones in order, we can verify that we got the parent-child relationships right. Yep. If you messed up, you can just redo the parent-child relationships until it's right. Now we can create the control bones by duplicating one of the new parents, and create the constraints on those new parents. Now we have our default pose preserved, but the neck also adjusts properly to the body and head rotating. Not only that, but we can also manually rotate the neck bone on top of all of this. I also just want to note that this construction we've built here is basically a generalization of Mr. Hot Dog's body rig. This behaves the same as that rig, but we can apply it to any bone chain, no matter how its bones are aligned. Cool, right? However, in this specific case, we can actually simplify it. The user is not going to be controlling the body as part of the head and neck rig, right? And since the neck is essentially following the body anyway because of the parent-child relationship, we really don't need any of the bones or constraints related to the body. So let's remove those. This setup still works just like before, except that we're now directly rotating the body bone instead of rotating it via a separate control. This body bone, in fact, could be controlled by anything, and this setup will still work. So now we have the auto neck working, and the neck can also be tweaked manually on top of that. So the only thing left is to create a socket switch for the head control. We actually already know how to create that, but I'll walk you through it again since it might seem a little confusing how to apply it here. First, let's move the intermediate parent bones to a hidden layer, since they're not relevant to this at all, and they'll just clutter our view and make things more confusing. Now let's create the socket bone and the real parent bone. And let's parent the head control to the real parent. Now add the copy location and copy transform constraints to the parents. Now when we rotate the body, the head control, and therefore the head, follows. But if we turn off the copy transforms constraint, then the head keeps its own independent rotation. The only thing we need to do now is move the head control to the same location as the parent and socket. This looks pretty confusing, obviously, because there's lots of overlapping bones that look alike. But if you understand the structure behind them, then it's not so weird. And obviously, in the final rig, we'll set up a custom property on the head control for the socket switch. And we'll move all of the mechanism bones to a hidden layer. Oh, and of course, we'll want to lock the translation of the neck bone and the head control. They're only for rotation, not location. And that's it. This is how I currently rig necks and heads. At least, well, short necks in any case. Long necks are a totally different beast. Imagine flamingos. Oh goodness.